Uh, what do you think about when you're working with buyers, uh, when you first sit down with them or when they decide to write an offer? It's price terms and conditions, right? P, T, and D. So I'm gonna make my way over to the to the whiteboard. Let me see. Boop, boop. All right, so price terms and conditions. Let's start with price. List price. Um, it's important that you have a conversation in today's market to say that the list price is only a suggestion or a starting point. Unless your market's different, I can tell you nothing's selling for the list price. And then what you need to do is go back and analyze the data and make, you know, um, if you have good relationships with your fellow agents, you could call on pendings and say, Hey, uh, what did that one sell for? Just give me a range. Um, something like that. But once they sell what I would go in and, 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 and look at if I have a zip code or a whole town that I'm looking at, take a few hours and look at what they sold, you know, what the list price was and what the sale price was. So you get what's called the list price to sales price ratio. So if I can sit down with a buyer and say, look at in the, cause it's very specific. You can get this list price sale price ratio. you it'll be on your, uh, on the reports that the board puts out as far as the market statistics and all that, but it's your whole County as a whole and all price ranges. I like to break it down and say, all right, if you're looking up to 250,000, in my market, that's like super hot. It's like super hot. That's like first time home buyer price range, depending on the town too. So I would say, okay, in the 200 K range in one, four, six, two, six, I know S is watching going, um, we don't have that in Queens unless it's a co-op or condo, but let's say 200 K range, or let's just, if it was 500 K, whatever your, your price point is in a certain area, that could be a town. I'm just using a zip code for an example. Um, I would say the recent sales, which you could do the last three months, you can do the last six months, uh, you could do the last year because then I feel like market conditions haven't really changed that much uh, in, in the last year or so, uh, but it's entirely up to you. You then would say, okay, it is 121%. You know what that means? <laughs> it means properties on average are selling for 21% more than what they're listed for. So if you're going out with a buyer who's pre-approved for 200, guess what? The likelihood is if you're showing them $200,000 houses, you're setting them up for disappointment because that property is gonna, 21% of that is 242, right? 21, 42, yeah, 242,000. So really you have to find a way and interest rates are going up. So that's going to affect your affordability. You have to instead make sure that if they want to, uh, if they're pre-approved for 250, that you're showing them stuff in the 200 range. Now you're setting them up for success. Why show somebody 200 and in, in the hopes that, Hey, no, I'm a great negotiator. Maybe we'll find you a deal. Where's the deal. Okay. The deal in this market is getting them a house. That's a, that's, that's what you have to communicate. Like, the win isn't me negotiating the best price possible. The win is me getting you a house. Cause I can tell you, uh, there was a house that I bought. I went, uh, at the time, let's call it almost 10% over asking. It wasn't a crazy market like this, but 10% over asking there was 16 offers on the property. Uh, I never remembered what I paid for that house. What I remembered, well, I remember now cause I'm telling you, but what I remembered is that I was happy every day that I pulled in the driveway. And I think that's something to tell your clients, it's like, you're not really paying another $42,000. Uh, if you look at a mortgage, I'm going to go to red for mortgage. Okay. Mortgage, let's say it's for $42 or 42,000. And I'm stepping away from the mic. So it's, Hey, good morning, Jeffrey. So mortgage at 42,000, let's call that, um, $5 per thousand, roughly that's $210 a month. Does that make sense? 
right? When you start breaking it down, it's not thousands of dollars. You break it down dollars per thousand. The folks that are really masters at this are the people you bought your car from. They go, what? Oh, can we get you into a car today? What kind of payment are you looking for? That's all they care about. Cause car, look at the average used car. Now I think it's like $28,000. The average new car is like 45, <laughs> right? You're like, damn, $28,000 for new, for a used car. Uh, so if you go to the, they go to you and say, well, what kind of comfortable, what payment are you comfortable with? You say, oh, I want to spend 350 to, uh, $350 a month. No, no more than that. What they do is they'll extend your, your freaking, your note, your card note to 72 months. Okay. Then you're paying like a hundred million dollars for that car because it's extended so far out. Okay. So that's list price to sale price ratio. Let me circle this. And feel free to post any comments in the chat. I'm away from the mouse, but when I get back over there, I'm going to put, put them on the screen. Uh, Billy, I see your comment about can they waive the appraisal con contingency, pay any appraisal gap. Okay. So screenshot this because I got to erase it. See, all, like all of this is preparing the buyer for success and giving them realistic expectations of what the market's going to do, what's really going to happen in this market so that they're not upset at you. Because if you don't tell them the truth, you try to sugarcoat it or pretend that you're going to do something that's above and beyond. I mean, maybe you are going to do something above and beyond, but keep their expectations low. It's a great way to exceed it.